Hi, coming to you from BandDirector.com, I'm Andy Atchison, I help instruct the Cavaliers. Um, today I have a rifle in my hand for all you band directors out there. Um, I want to explain a few things about the rifle and why we use it in the activity. Uh, one of the most important things you want to think about first is the fact that we have to take care of our equipment because we don't want to buy hundreds and hundreds of rifles. So one of the things we like to do here at the Cavaliers is to make sure that we tape it up because it's all made of wood and it, and it happens to be pretty light. So if it's the ground enough, you know, you're going to need it. So we take strappy tape and some electrical tape and we bound it up so it's nice and tight. Um, the rifle has a couple parts to it, the bolt the butt, the barrel, the tip, and it has this strap right here just for a fact that uh, a lot of people like to use when they spin. Um, in, the, in the basic sense, the rifle is a traditional piece of equipment that's been used in the activity for years, and uh, we still use it to this day, but in a very different way. Um, I'm sure back in the early times of marching band and so on, uh, it was just used at a right order and things of that sort. But nowadays we like to spin it and show weight shift and change um, as well as musical elements being incorporated through the rifle as we spin it. The first thing I wanted to show you was just your basic spin. Um, the first thing we do here at the Cavaliers, technique changes all the way through the country. Uh, different groups do different things. But here at the Cavaliers, we like to wrap our thumbs and make sure that we're pulling apart on the rifle. This rifle happens to be a 39-inch. They come in a variety of sizes, but we like a bigger gun because we're marching all guys. We like to make sure we look strong. Uh, when doing a drop spin, the first thing you want to think about is initiation. Color guard has got to spin together. They've, it's just the first element about color guard. You can't have flags and rifles all over the field. So the first thing we think about is how we start the rifle and use the weight shift and go on down on the down count. This is our initiation count. We call it count eight. So we always count off five and six and seven and eight. We're pushing down on the and count, or sorry, the eight count to initiate to go up on the and count, down on one. We all like to use musical terms in the color guard activity because that's, of course, how we incorporate it in the activity. So when we count off, we're always usually in, in increments of four. So five and six and seven and eight and one. So there we do an exercise just to make sure that we're using the weight shift and the weight change of the rifle because we have all the weight down here. And we're trying to counterbalance it against the butt of the rifle. This really helps in technique to understand how to spin the rifle. When you get to harder things and try to do different, different spins and things like that, you have to know where the weight shift is from one to the other. So one of the other things that seems to be important, at least in the color guard activity, is tossing. But before we get to that, we want to make sure that we can actually get to our left flat. Right here, as you can see, as I, as I was talking about before, this is our right flat. We start from this position, make sure we're nice and strong, looking right here at the elbow and uh, having that nice 90 degree angle almost, and boxing out. It's very important to lift up your chest because when you're performing to an audience at a stadium, everything has to project much higher than just right in front of me, obviously. So when we go to our right flat, we like to think about spins, and then we stop at the left flat. You want to make sure that the barrel is the part that's always flat. As you can see, the butt's kind of uneven, so we never like to think that way. This is the most consistent part of the rifle. So when we get to that left flat, we like to hit here. Make sure that we're pulling apart and separating on the rifle. It's very important to pull apart and separate so that we still look strong. A lot of times you'll have um, people that will be spinning, you know, first time will have this all in like this, ready to toss. It's very hard to get things out when you're all in it yourself, okay? So when we go one, two, three, we hit here. We like to go to our dip, as we like to call it, at least. And we, we at the Cavaliers have this special thing we call the Cavalier slap, where you take the air of the gun on the back of the rifle and you snap it. And I don't know if you could hear that, but you take everything and pull the air out of it so that way you get a nice lock on the dip. It's one of those things we like to make sure. It's like um, it's making sure that you're subdividing on the ant counts to make sure that your band comes in together or things of that sort. It's the same kind of nature where you like to go spin, spin, hit, hit. So it's all it's all initiated together at the same time. We can see this lock all the time. Now when we get into tosses, one of the things we have to make sure that's very important is counting our tosses. This could go one and a half rotations. As you can see, the rifle spun around one and a half times uh, because the barrel's on the bottom side as well as the bolt. Now we can also make sure that if we're counting our rotations, we can catch on the half or we can catch a double, like so. And we always get right back to that right flat position. That's very important. Obviously, the wind is a factor right now. Uh, we're here in Port here on Michigan. I'm not used to that. So the rifle can fluctuate when you toss it in the air and it gets away from your body. But uh, making sure that you're starting at that right flat, hitting, initiating together. Then from there, we have the push down count. And then we're releasing on the 45 because if you try to really release a rifle straight up, all the weights in the butt and it's going to go flying that way and probably hit somebody in the head. You never want that to happen. So you want to make sure also you don't release too early because that just killed your member over there. All right. So we like to release at that 45. All the weight in the butt is going to naturally take it over. It's going to rainbow just a little bit to come right back to that right flat position. We're catching the same right flat position we did before. Nothing changed. We're making sure we're wrapping our thumbs and keep it nice and strong. So in all, you're using this, this initiation of this eight count down to one, two, hit on the, hit on the left flat right there. 
obviously my my finger is two fingers from the swivel right now. Okay, my right hand is right where it needs to be. Then I slap that count to get the toss out and catch back at that right flat. This is just an exercise we like to do to make sure we understand the weight of the right foot because when you're trying to make big effects usually happen in the uh, activity, a lot of people like to toss and they get a lot bigger. I've only tossed a double because I'm afraid of the wind right now, but we can get up to sixes and sevens and so on and things of that sort. But it's really important to understand the weight of the rifle and using these in the activity and making sure that you can spin many different ways doing all kinds of sorts of things, manipulating the weight of the rifle just the same way as you would um, play your instrument. You can play many different notes on it. Same thing. I can incorporate and and show you many things that, that seem to be effective when trying to show you visually what the music's happening with the rifle. Thank you.